Today, we're looking at a blue ink by Monteverde Chariot. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, if you're interested, you can follow me on Instagram, and if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Pilot Metropolitan with a 1.0 stub. I wrote with it for a day and took the notes for this video. In order to have a standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper, although I do use more papers and those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub, quite a bit lighter than a stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some very nice shading spots. The K in quick is much darker. Brown starts dark and works its way lighter. The is a very dark word, where dog starts dark and works its way lighter. 14 seconds to dry. Now the medium is darker than the extra fine, but not quite as dark as the stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer shading in the form of some darker letters. He from the is darker. K is dark. It from quick is darker. The BR of brown is darker. The O is slightly lighter than in over. So it is there. It's not tremendous, but it is there. It does offer slight bits of personality. 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both left to right do show us some color variation, and we do get some color variation. Tomoy River. No bleeding and normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine, but not as dark as the stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 32 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does offer some nice shading. Like, Fox starts a little bit lighter, gets a little bit darker. Now we're going from a dark to darker tone with this type of stuff. Quick goes from very dark to dark to very dark. So it's there. It's just that since this is a darker blue, it doesn't show as wildly. 16 seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, some shade spots, again in the form of some darker letters, like the BR in brown or the X in fox. The Y in lazy is a little bit lighter. The is a very dark word. In over, the beginning of the O is lighter than the rest of the word. 21 seconds to dry. The scrubbies, far left to far right, both show a little bit of color variation. We do see little bits of shading in this writing. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see across the very bottom this kind of teal color. And that's not moving up very much, that teal, but it is kind of there. And then we get this very light purple that works its way up. And at the top, we get a very dark, dark blue. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that teal line is much more there. The purple that moved up is much more noticeable. The blue at the top is the same as it was. It just, none of it has traveled as far as it did on the original chromatography. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. 
looking at the highlighter, you know immediately not to use this in a note-taking situation if you go back and highlight because it doesn't like it. Now water's reactivating and lifting almost all this ink off the paper. This is only 30 seconds and I'm starting to see the white of the paper come through. So that teal that was holding on, not so much here. Pen flush did everything that water did and its results in 30 seconds are a bit more. You are seeing the white of the paper very clearly in a number of spots around it. So if the water for some reason didn't work, the pen flush definitely will. Although you don't need it, the one third bleach solution completely obliterates this ink off the paper, even though you won't need it. I test ink viscosity with a tilt test that I'll link somewhere. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Monteverdi's Chariot has a viscosity of 2.87 putting it just inside normal, the very high side, but still normal. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. I find this by using my writing samples that were done on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. Monteverdi's Chariot has an average dry time of 21 seconds, making it normal, but very high side, so barely made it to normal, it's right there. But this ink is one of those inks that its location on the bell curves are very close to each other, which is quite interesting. Instead of finding inks that look like Monteverdi's Chariot, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice orange and went with Krishna's Orange Honey. The second writing sample is done on Apica CD black and red, and Franklin Christoph paper. Here we get to look at Apica paper. Now, normally performs very well, but with the stub, even with the extra fine and some of the medium, we get a lot of spots where it's bleeding very heavy into the paper, not through the paper, not touching the back of the paper, but enough to stop me from using the back of the paper. And it's got quite a bit of ghosting going on. I think a little bit more in person than on camera, but what we got. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 10 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 14 seconds to dry. This scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. Black and red notebooks. No bleeding, no ghosting. Strange that it did better than the Apica, but it did. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Now the extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does offer shading again in the form of some darker letters, like the BR in brown, the K in quick, the E in over, the PS in jumps. Seven seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the extra fine, but not quite as dark as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 9 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, although in the extra fine, we do get some darker letters. Last up, Franklin Christoph paper. Very shocked with what happened here. I normally don't see this much of an issue with Franklin Christoph, but we have a lot of bleed spots. A lot of ghosting. You don't get to use the back of the page, but it didn't touch the page underneath. 1.1 feathers, yes please, lots of them. Lots of them. Oh my god, it's a Hitchcock movie. It's really bad. No spread halo sheen shade. Ugh, that's bad. Extra fine is lighter than the stub. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. Nine seconds to dry. The medium's darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub. Almost, but just a tone lighter. The, the medium does have feathering. Not the Hitchcock movie that the stub did, but it has a lot of feathering all over the K, all over the Q, all over the word the, all over the word lazy. No spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect any, we didn't get any, and that is all that I have for the writing sample.
So what do I think of Monteverde's Chariot? This is a great blue ink that puts down nice shading with almost every nib. I can absolutely see why this might be the blue ink that somebody would go to as their go-to blue ink. So what nib and pen would give the best writing experience with this ink? A drier pen is going to give a, drier, a lighter tone. A wetter pen, a much darker tone. I prefer the medium right in the middle. It is a very vibrant, nice blue at that point. Right in the middle, vibrant, beautiful. If you've made it this far and you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm gonna remind you to subscribe. Thanks for watching.